Okay, so our third speaker is David from Monero. Yeah, so thank you, Eddie, and thank you, everyone, to be here. And thank you, Pierre, because your explanation allowed me to skip some detail that I wanted to talk about, about the transparency of the blockchain. So, um, well, uh, when we think about uh, Bitcoin, we think about uh, money, and that's important. And what is the first thing that comes to mind when we think about money? What is the first picture? This is the first picture when we think about money. But Bitcoin is not this. This is not cash. It is not cash. Sorry, PR. Bitcoin is more like this, like a credit card. I will tell you why it is more like a credit card. Because every time you are doing a transaction, it is stored in a database forever. And fortunately, thanks to the bank secrecy, only you, your bank, and of course the law enforcement is able to know what you did with this money. Uh, but with uh, Bitcoin, you don't have this. You don't have bank secrecy on Bitcoin, so everyone in the world can know what you did. Actually, everyone in the world can know what everyone did. The only real protection you have is the so-called pseudonymity, that one person and one address cannot be related, which is completely wrong. It's, it happened because of the human behavior, and it also happened because of improving technology for analyzing this. So, uh, okay, you could say, okay, you know, I'm just a fine guy, I have nothing to hide, it's okay. Well, maybe you have nothing to hide, but you certainly have something to protect. And I will show you why privacy matters. All of this can be done right now with a uh, transparent blockchain. Targeted advertisement, we know when you bought something, why you bought something, and maybe even how much money you had when you bought it. Uh, I think I don't need to explain more. Uh, of course, once I found out that one big address be belonged to someone, I can just pay this person a visit. Um, my family, my friends, or my boss could know what I'm doing with my money or what I am not doing with my When was the last time that you donated to the church, for example? I don't remember seeing your transaction here. And remember, everything is on the web. Blockchain.info, you have everything. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, you are paid in Bitcoin, okay? So you are giving an address to your boss. He's sending the Bitcoin there. So he can check and track everything what, that you are doing. Oh, and it just happened that you have a transaction to the CGT. Uh, it's a tr French trade union. Wow. Yeah, great. Thank you, boss. Um, also, and this really happened. On Coinbase, several persons complained the last week, month, that the account were cancelled because of laundering. They were not laundering. Okay, maybe they were, but I don't think the three-person guy were. But the money just happened to come from a suspicious activity two transactions before. What could they do? Yeah, they should check the blockchain to be sure about every single of the money. Yeah, right. Um, also, if you are using um, Bitcoin or any other transparent blockchain money, it's not only about Bitcoin, remember, it's about transparent blockchain. You can, if you are a, co a company, your competitor can check the salaries you are paying your people, the suppliers, the contract, all of this, is, if it's done in Bitcoin, it's transparent, it's everywhere. And finally, one last thing is about net neutrality. Uh, do you know about net neutrality, some of you here? Okay, so the net neutrality is the idea that basically the, the, the person, uh, uh, who are taking care of the, of the fiber optics, of the transportation system, should not, give a, uh, should not care about what you are doing with it. You should not say, okay, you are sending YouTube video, it's very heavy, I want to, to stop it. Right now, the, the way the system works for mining, Monero, everything, is that the, the miners, they get new money, new Bitcoin, new Monero, new whatever, but they also take care of transactions. They are verifying transactions, which means that the miner know what is in the transaction and where it goes. Now imagine, for example, that you are a reporter without borders, and you are, uh, ac you are accepting transaction in uh, Bitcoin, and that a large state doesn't want reporter without borders to have money. They can actually bribe a uh, large amount of miners, as Pierre said, and um, uh, earlier it was also for Neocon, the um, mining is getting more and more concentrated, so it means that it's more and more easy to address, to contact some large mining pole, 
and to prevent them to accept any transaction sent to one particular person that you don't like, or even better. We don't want your, comp your e-commerce competitor to receive money. We can have kind of war on this. All of this, why? Because the miner know what is, it, what is going on, and they can uh, check and decide what to do. Basically, miners are becoming sensors. These are all the problem of a transfer and blockchain. Now, with Monero, we are facing this. For centuries, we have a physical cash, which is decentralized and private. Um, in the 90s, David Chom created eGold, uh, eCash, uh, e sorry. And eCash was private, but it was not decentralized. In 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto created something that is decentralized and electronic. And finally, in 2014, we created Monero, which is both decentralized, private, and of course, electronic. So, um, we are not a company. We are an open source project. We are only relying on funds. We have seven persons. Two of them decided to be public faces, one in South Africa, Ricardo Spagni, and me in France. And the other decided for their own reason to remain anonymous. Um, that's just a difficult choice. One thing that is important, because we are not kind of a gangster or drug dealer or whatever, what is important to know is that there are some reasons why you want transactions to be visible. You are a company, you need to be audited by the tax office or just by an internet audit. You need them to be able to check that what is going on. And for this, we have a very interesting feature called the view key. The view key is basically a password that gives one person that you decide the ability to know what is going on in your account, but only them. Only the auditing company can check your, your sal the salaries and the transaction, but not the competitors. It is selective. Um, if you're a charity, you have a moral duty to show what is going on with the money that people are giving to you. You just give the view key on the internet and everyone can check. You're a parent, you are giving money to your, to your child, but you want to keep kind of control about what she's doing. Much like now we are giving a, phone, a mobile phone to your daughter and you want well, to check what is going on. You can, you just keep the view key and you can control this again. So it is fundamentally private, but optionally transparent. When you need it to be transparent, it can be. And if a government wants to control, you just knock at the door and say, okay, give me your view key and you buy it. And that's all. So this is important that we are play fair both for privacy conscious and for regulators. I will skip there because, well, we just have 10 minutes. Basically, we worked a lot in just nine months. And, um, yeah, um, all right. This one, I will skip it also. It's about the various uh, software that we created. Um, we talk about money. It's much more than money, we believe, really. Uh, we are constantly improving with new innovation on the system uh, on the Monero system, and we continue to do so. For example, we will add I2P a router. What is I2P? I2P is basically something that prevents you to hide your IP address also. So if you want to be completely private, you have to have the whole chain of security to be private. And right now, when you are using any transparent blockchain or any coin, by the way, your IP is still public. Uh, again, if you want to hide it, you can. This is one of the things we are working on. And also, we consider that um, assets and uh, um, building blocks on the blockchain can be more than money because remember, Bitcoin and Monero and everything is not about money. It's about transaction. It just happened that one of these transactions is called money, but there are so a lot of others. Contracts are transaction. Um, if when you are writing um, patents and you want them to be completely uh, uh, recorded on the blockchain. These are so kind of transaction like a notarial service in a way. All of these are the future of uh, the blockchain on top of money. And then I think, yeah, this one, I say, it's okay, it's my name and Ricardo who is also accountable. So if a regulator want to have an information, just knock in France or in South Africa. And I think this is it. If you have any question, I will be very happy to answer. Excellent. Thank you.
Can I just tell you, David, that if you, if you come and pay me a visit to steal my bitcoins, I'm pretty sure I can take you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Right. Does anyone have a question for David? Symbolic question. Why is it called Monero? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Monero is the Esperanto name for money. We wanted something that... We have, our target audience is 7 billion people. So, right. better to have an international language. Uh, you, you talk about anonymity a lot, mm. and um, what do you think of other anonymous altcoins like dark coins or other, um, other blockchains uh, using anonymity as, a, as a, an advantage of Bitcoin? And uh, do you think anonymity is a is a um, is the first advantage of Monero next um, to Bitcoin? It was f the it was definitely the the thing that stood out the most compared to the others. Yes, uh, privacy. Uh, now about regarding the other privacy conscious coins. First, I would like to inform you that in May we will have a large uh, meeting in Paris with Ricardo Spagni and me here about the matter of privacy on uh, on. Uh, uh, blockchain and other things. Now, regarding the other currencies, first, uh, Monero, well, basically, CryptoNode, is the only one which is uh, uh, trans um, which has uh, opaque blockchain. All of the other, including Shadow Cash, or it's a bit different for Shadow Cash, or Dark Coin, or others, they all work on a transparent blockchain. So, basically, they all suffer the same mistake. Regarding Darkon, there's several even more mistakes, but it would be unfair to talk about Darkon, and it would take so much time to debunk it to that it's not even worth it. I think you will get tired. Okay, thanks. <laughs> when do you launch? Are you pre-mined? Uh, proof of stake, proof of work? What does ah, it work? It's completely proof of work from the day one, and we use the um, innovative emission curve that. We do not have block halving. So for people who know what is block halving, it means that it basically artificially disrupts the, the, um, the, the network every once in a while when all of a sudden you only get half of them. Uh, every block in Monero is a little bit smaller than the previous one. Oh yeah, and r about this. Uh, we are using a, an algorithm called Cryptonite, which basically uh, reduces the difference of power between a CPU and a GPU, which means that uh, regarding concentration, professional miners, the ones who are concentrating the network, use a lot of GPU. And everyday people, which is the dream of Satoshi Nakamoto at the beginning, they only have CPU, a regular computer. Um, soon, we will implement something similar to Boink or SETI at home, that is, you just have your wallet open and it will mine, natu mine naturally. Our goal is that if millions of people do this, the professional miner and the centralization will be cancelled. So, I've been in Bitcoin since like 2011 or something, and since that time I keep hearing that Bitcoin is not anonymous, everything is transparent, we can track everything, blah, 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 blah. And in the meantime, there has been like 30 acts or something for huge amounts of money and nobody knows where the money is. This is just one case. But actually, uh, from a practical standpoint, I think it's very easy to use Bitcoin in a way where it's anonymous. So, um, in my opinion, Bitcoin is almost anonymous. Yes, obviously, if you make a direct uh, transfer to me and I make a direct transfer to an address which is public and every, everybody knows wh what it is, okay, in that case, the transaction, you can know it's me, but I mean, if you don't reuse address and stuff like that and you do a little bit of mixing, then it's, it's anonymous, in my opinion. And uh, we can see that uh, the law of enforcement has never found someone based on blockchain analysis or anything like that. And you have tons of pseudo... Right yeah. You're talking about who? Rolls Ulrich? Yeah, but Rolls Ulrich was not found by blockchain analysis, not at all. Mm -hmm. He was found because he used the mails and uh, identity that he had for stuff like that. He, he was never caught uh, because of blockchain analysis. It's just uh, 
there, there's no, and even when they caught uh, Ross Ulrich, they were not even able to catch all the other guys who were dealing on Silk Road, except those who had identification information like IP and email. So I think Bitcoin is kind of anonymous. So, but that's my opinion. <laughs> okay. Okay. If, if people are so stupid that you don't need to to uh, to track the blockchain, yeah, it's better, less work, and the same result. It's normal that the FBI did it, and they they were right. Uh, first thing. Second, um, we are uh, okay. Conjon doesn't work, by the way. Uh, doesn't work anymore. Um, the right now, most of the Bitcoin user are not that stupid. Okay, except maybe on Bitcoin Talk, but that's different. Um, and, but we are not targeting mainstream users. Mainstream users want to do half of the thing that we are doing now, first thing. Second, the uh, technology for analyzing on an industrial scale the, tech, the blockchain is arriving right now. I would just suggest you to check about the chain analysis. Uh, it was on Bitcoin Talk one week ago, and they are doing it professionally on this one. So when it comes to identifying, it will happen. It, it took time. It took something like uh, four years, but it's coming. And again, again, uh, if you need uh, transparency, there are better way to, to if you need to, to, to have transparency. For example, you knock at the door, you say, you need to give us the password. Period. No, just, uh, th there is uh, one technology that people can use to stay anonymous, which is Tor. Uh, what do you think of people using Tor in conjunction with another coin mm -hmm. instead of Monero? Okay, uh, it's good, but not good enough. First, uh, Tor, okay, by the way, we're using I2P instead of Tor for very se several technical reasons, but also because the way Tor works is still a little bit centralized. I didn't talk about it, but we are actually three pillars in, in Monero. Like, there are five pillars in Wikipedia, there are three in Monero. First one is privacy, the second one is decentralization, and the third one is about scalability. Uh, for example, you know about the blockchain size li block limit on Bitcoin, we don't have this, so we can handle much more transactions than Bitcoin could, except if Gavin succeeds to convince the Bitcoin community to change this. Um, so Tor is good. I mean, it's really good. It's still, it seems not to be good enough for certain things, and, um, well, it's better to have two options. Actually, for the technical reason, uh, Tor was not uh, perfect for this. Okay, David, on that, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you.